Hello Stampers, it's Debbie with Stamp It With Debbie and today I have a really fun treat holder to share with you using the Celebrate With Cake stamp set. Now you will not find this stamp set in the annual catalog that just recently came out but the item is orderable and I'll leave a link below in the comments on how you can order it. So I used this set for my Facebook Live earlier this week and I'll again leave a link below just in case you missed that video. And I wanted to follow up with one more really fun treat holder. And this is what I have here. So inside is a treat. This I'm just holding together a little binder clip because the card really does sit like this. And you can see when it sits, it kind of opens up a little bit. So the binder clip just holds it closed. So inside is a little card. And then inside of the box is a little treat. And let me show you what's in there. It is one of these little cakes and it is a little Debbie cake this is the product in case you're looking for it they're called birthday cakes but I think they could use be used for any celebration cake so say someone got a promotion or graduated from something or your child or someone else you know did really well on a test or some other accomplishment in life what a better way to celebrate with cake. And that's what the card says. So let's get started and I'll show you exactly how to make this fun treat holder. So again, celebrate with cake. I'll leave the link below so that you know how to order it. We need a couple things here and I'm using Flirty Flamingo cardstock. But you could use any color. And I'm also using these 6 by 6 paper stacks and they come in all of the color suites. So this one is the brights. There's one for subtles, neutrals, the in colors. So again, mine is Flirty Flamingo. I'm taking a piece of, this is a full sheet of cardstock and I'm going to cut this at five and a half. I have to open up this arm here for my next cut. Five and a half because that will cut my cardstock in half. This is how I can get the card and the box out of one sheet. So we're at five and a half by six and a half. And this is the box. Now we need the actual card and that is going to be cut at seven and one quarter by four and a half. All right, and now we do need another tool. You could do the scoring all on this if you wanted to. I just find the scoreboard to be a little bit easier, so that's what I'm going to use. And so now again, for the box, which is six and a half by five and a half, onto the five and a half inch side, we're gonna score it one half of an inch two inches, three inches, and four and a half. Then we're gonna turn it, and now you can see this measures at six and a half, and we're gonna measure, or I'm sorry, score at one inch and at five and a half. And that's all the scoring we need for the box, but we do need to score our card. And so on the seven and a quarter inch side, we're gonna score this at three inches. And that's all the scoring that we need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and um, get my paper snips because we do need to do a little bit of cutting on this project. Now I'm hoping that you'll be able to see this is the box and there's a very small rectangle right here. As opposed to the other side, there's a square. There's a rectangle. We need to cut. I'm just going to use my pen because we're cutting them off. We're going to cut these two pieces right off. Stay on the out or the inside edge or the outside edge, I guess, of the score line so that that gets cut off and you don't end up with that in your box. And you're going to do the same down at the, the bottom edge as you do the side edge. Okay, now that those pieces are gone, we need to create something to be able to form our box. So we're going to cut up on this score line and this score line, both sides. Now when I cut, I'm bringing it real close, I am gonna cut 
to this side of the score line so that I can cut that off. I'm going to cut a little bit of an angle. Just helps our box to go together a little better and I'll do it on this side too. And now this side I'm going to cut to the right of the score line so that I can cut it off. And then I need to flip this around and do the same thing on the other side. All right, I'm going to push all my scraps out of the way here. Now you do want your bone folder so that you can secure all of those score lines very well. Just make a good crease so that when you go to put it together, it's not going to resist wherever you put the adhesive. All right, so that's good. Now we are going to put adhesive on the inside of all four of these little tabs. Now you can choose which adhesive you're going to use. I would probably recommend a very strong like tear and tape or you can use the Tombow liquid adhesive. And I think that's what I'll use today is the Tombow liquid adhesive. So I'm going to just put it on this edge first. Go ahead and fold that side up and you just have to hold it for a second. This glue dries pretty quickly and very, it's very um, durable. All right, so I'm just gonna hold that. And now I need to do the two inside, the other inside ones. Okay, and that part is all done. So the next thing that we wanna do is put our um, designer paper on the outside of our box. So I have cut the pieces already and let me give you the measurements for them. You're going to need four little pieces. This piece is cut at one and a quarter inch by four and a quarter. You also need another piece at three quarters of an inch wide by four and a quarter. And then you need two smaller pieces cut at three quarters of an inch by one and a quarter inch long. And we can just put our adhesive right on the back. And these two go on the ends here. And then this one that's three quarters inch wide will go on the front. And the good thing too about the liquid adhesive is you do have a little chance to move it around a little bit just in case you didn't get it on just the right way you wanted it to. And so that is all set. Now, another thing that I did is I wanted to create a little, just a little tab right there to be able to put their finger in when they were opening the box. So I'm using a half inch punch and I'm just gonna cut a little divot there. That way when they go to open the box, they have something to reach in and pull it, pull it out with. And we should at this time go ahead and stick our treat inside and then we can close the box. Now you don't have to, but I did discover that the treat, depending on what you put inside, can kind of make the box bulge up just a little bit. So I'm going to use a little bit of the polka dot tool ribbon. And I'm just gonna tie a bow just to kind of keep it closed and it makes it extra pretty. And you want to make sure not to pull this ribbon too tightly because it will thin it out and make it real skinny. 
Okay, so this part is done. Now we need to get started on our card part. We're going to use our bone folder to secure the edge on here so that our card lays down really well. And I'm just grabbing a little clip and a bow that I tied. So now we need to get our stamps. And the colors of ink that I'm using are Flirty Flamingo, Granny Apple Green, I'm using Little Melon Mambo, and I'm also using Seaside Spray. For this outside piece here, I need to... I forgot one more of my stamps, the one that says Celebrate with Cake. And we're going to ink that up in Flirty Flamingo. And I'll just show you, this is the part we're doing here. We're going to do this Celebrate with Cake banner in Flirty Flamingo. The flowers are in Flirty Flamingo and the stems and leaves are in Granny Apple Green. Now one trick that I kind of use when I'm using the photopolymer is to bring them down and you don't want to rock them, but do hold it for just a minute so all of the ink can transfer off of the stamp. And then I need to get my granny apple green. And then I'll go back to the flirty flamingo one more time. Okay, so that part is done and we can actually just turn it over and put it right on the front of our card. And we're going to put on the outside flap. The inside flap is going to get a different, different design. All right, now I need to get my Seaside Spray ink opened here. And my Melon Mambo. And let me open the card inside just to show you. I put a little bird. Oh, I'm actually not using Melon Mambo. I put a little bird holding a balloon. But if this was to celebrate something else, you could put... There's a cake stamp inside of, or yeah, a cake stamp inside of the set. There's a mailbox, there's a bird, a balloon, there's some hearts. So if you just wanted to celebrate with somebody, you could stamp some hearts in there. And this one I did a little bird, so that's what I'm going to do on this one. Now this piece here is cut at four by four and a quarter. So you want to make sure to make sure it's got the right orientation before you put it inside of your card. And then the other thing that you want to remember is this part down here, one in inch of it is going to be secured to the bottom of the box. So whatever you stamp in here, you want to make sure it's at least one inch above where it needs to be. So I'm going to stamp my little bird in Seaside Spray. And his hat is going to be Granny Apple Green. And the balloon is going to be Flirty Flamingo. And so we're all done stamping. We'll leave the rest of the space to write a greeting to celebrate with somebody. So I'm just going to close up my ink real quick here so that I don't get it on anything. And then we can attach this piece inside of our card. Again, it's really important to remember to leave at least one inch of space down here on the bottom because that part is going to be adhered down here at the bottom of the card. So the next step is to go ahead and put some adhesive on. And what I'm going to do is put some tear and tape right here. So I'm just going to run it from end to end so that it can hold my card very well because we don't want that part to come off. We want it to always be a celebration for somebody. Now obviously you won't be able to mail this card out in the mail and that's okay because not every every treat that we make has to be mailed out but you could give it to someone in person. And I'm just peeling the backing off right now and I'm going to put a little extra piece here because I didn't quite get to the edge. And then the best way I found is just go ahead and set your box down I'm trying to get it so you can see the best. And then bring this, this card 
right up to it. So the card is just coming right up to the back and then you can push it down really well. Now you can see that the card kind of opens a little bit and, and that would be okay um, if it was sitting on someone's desk or dresser or wherever they had it sitting. The card would just flap open a little bit. So I decided to use, hopefully you can see it, we have these little binder clips in the catalog and I decided that if I clipped it right here on the side, just like this, it held the card closed enough so they could see the pretty bow on top and they could see all the flowers. And then I did tie a bow with some white baker's twine and I'm just using the glue dot and I kind of folded it in half. And I'm just going to put that right on top. So that just lets them know, hey, look, there's a binder clip over here holding that, that and look how pretty it is. So there you go, a fun little project that you can create using the Celebrate with Cake stamp set that is in the catalog. I didn't want you to miss it. And if you need help with um, any of the item description or item number, I'm sorry, item number, I'll leave that down in the link below. If you're watching me through YouTube, come on over to my Facebook page. We have a lot of fun over there. And I would love to see you. It's facebook.com backslash stamp it with Debbie. I hope that you've enjoyed this project and I hope that you will hit the subscribe button so that you can see more of my videos. Thank you so much for stopping by today and have a great day.